Alrighty, a quick uh, Saturday afternoon update. Weather's been holding out real nice on us here in Florida. And I've been able to get out here in the garage and work on old beast mode a little bit more than I had anticipated. So things are coming together real well. I'm real excited with how things are looking. Uh, got the engine and transmission in, been working on the fuel system and the launch control system. So I'm going to pan out and kind of let everybody see what's going on here. So switched over to a new sheet metal intake. Uh, as you can see, fuel system is kind of lightly plumbed. The pressure regulator is going to be in the back there. The gray line coming out of the back is actually the oil feed line for the turbo. Uh, you can see the the bracketry of how I had the turbo mounted to the block and whatnot. Still don't have the passenger side manifold on. And yes, hopefully I'll be able to take that exhaust housing off and send it in and get something done to it. So uh, without coating, those things tend to get pretty crappy looking pretty quick. So you can see uh, up here close to the drain line goes into the face of the timing cover. Uh, TIG welded on a uh, 10 a.m. bung for that line to slide in there. So passenger side exhaust uh, that actually dumps out kind of in between all these power steering hoses. I do still use the old Saginaw style uh, power steering reservoir and pump. Back out here, again, fuel line. Uh, is the return line under here. Got to clamp that down. It's just kind of, everything's just kind of loose right now. Got the heater hose, stainless steel heater hose, uh, 90 degree angle pieces from STS machining. Uh, they really aid in routing the heater hoses in the right direction because it's a stock ball where they come straight out pointing at the engine. You really had to put a serious kink in the hose. So that's a real nice addition. Uh, looks real good, real well built on the inside of the bay. And then my launch control system, I tried to stuff as much as much of it as I could down in the fender. Uh, but basically it's going to be the feed line comes out of the clutch uh, and into this side of the roll control valve. So when I've activated the, basically it's a line lock, so roll control valve, whatever you want to call it. Once that's activated, it actually forces the clutch fluid to go through this adjustable portioning, proportioning valve. Uh, and then from that out to the, uh, out to the actual clutch release. So I can adjust, if I want to dump the clutch, I can adjust how quick or how slow that fluid actually releases out for launching in first gear. So there's a couple of companies out there that make them. I just decided to build one. I'm total into it about $80 worth of parts so far. Um, so looking forward to that, to tuning that, that's probably going to be a heck of a lot of fun, but, uh, got the lines all bent up. I'll end up coating those or covering them up or something, but the, uh, the engine bay is looking real good, nice and shiny. Uh, and like I said, engine and transmissions in there. So, uh, next weekend, I should have, by next weekend, I should have all the exhaust on it, uh, the, the underpiece that goes under the front, crossover pipe, I guess, and then the down pipe, I'll have that on as well, and hopefully next Saturday, I'm, the whole weekend, I'm actually off, so uh, while it is my middle daughter's birthday, we'll be celebrating that, but uh, any free time I got, I'm going to get started on that wiring harness. I do have all the, um, all the plugs and everything ordered and coming in, so for all the, you know, all the injectors and sensors and whatnot, so. It uh, shouldn't be too much longer now. Maybe, hopefully by the end of March, I'll have it uh, fired up and running. So, appreciate you watching. I'll keep the updates coming.